San Francisco, a city built on ancient hills with geology as diverse as its inhabitants. A city famous for earthquakes in a state famous for earthquakes. And a fading memory for many San Franciscans. October 17, 1989, 5.04 in the afternoon. The third game of the World Series had not yet started, but players had started to warm up and coverage of the game had already begun when the earthquake struck. And she was like, and she was like, and we was like, and she was like, and he was like, and we was like, Hello, and welcome to another episode of Just Ask Joey. I'm your host, Joey. This is the only place on the internet where a former idiot answers your questions to help you either avoid idiocy or get over your idiocy. So big topic today, marriage and how views change kind of throughout your life on marriage. So the question of the day officially is, how have your views changed on marriage in your life? Well, pretty drastically, I would say. And I would think, I would guess most of you are pretty drastic also. So you either start out either thinking marriage is great and fantastic and wonderful and magical, or you start out thinking that marriage is stupid and contrived and outdated or whatever you're, you know, you either love it or hate it starting out. And then your views shift depending on it. I thought it was okay. I thought the institution of marriage seemed cool. I just thought the... I was very jaded by the idea of a like the Hollywood marriage. The the there's only one person, there's only one man for one woman, and one woman for one man, and and you find the right person, and things are great forever. I was I was pretty jaded on that. I'm not sure if that was because of relationships around me, if it was just uh, because it was Hollywood, it must not be like that kind of a thing. Um, even though there was, I had some marriages in my world that were awesome. They seemed awesome anyways. But my idea of marriage was very, it was mostly like you find somebody that you can deal with more than you find somebody that you're madly in love with and they're your best friend and, you know, you know, the Hollywood stuff. So that was kind of my view was, okay, you find somebody that you're compatible with, but what's compatible? Not fighting? You're both good with money or one's good with money and one's bad with money. One's good to keep stuff clean and one's a mess. I mean... Is it a yin and yang? How much yin and yang? How much do you give and take? Like, what does it take to make like a good marriage? Or what is a good marriage? You know, ideally, you're marrying your best friend. But if you look around at like relationships and stuff, you don't see too many where it seems like people are married to their best friend. So then you look at that and you go, oh, well, if most of them are not that great, then maybe marriage isn't, isn't all that great. One huge lesson to learn in that is just because a majority of things don't look good doesn't mean that it's right for it not to be good. And I hope that makes sense. What I came to understand about marriage is just because a whole bunch of people were doing it wrong doesn't mean that it can't be done right. One way to avoid that is to know yourself. This is the this podcast is the king of self-reflection. You have to know yourself in order to pick the right partner for yourself. And you have to not settle on, well, I get along with this guy or this girl better than I did the last two or three. Or this is a lot easier. We fight less than I did with the one before. So this must be better. This must be more what it's like. Or I'm a certain age and I have a certain job and I have a certain income and then this is just the next step. If you, as long as you keep yourself from settling for stuff like that, you're going to find the right person. And the major way that my view has changed has been from the whole best friend, love being around them all the time kind of thing. Um, I thought that was a bunch of crap. And it turns out that it is, it's not crap. It's just not that easy to find. So you have to, you have to work at it. And they say like, oh, marriage is work and compromise and this and that and stuff. If you find the right person, it, it really shouldn't be that much compromise because you guys are compatible. And I'm not, this isn't like an arranged marriage. You know, we're all, well, I'm assuming most of the people listening to this are free to marry whoever they want to marry. If you find the right person, the compromise shouldn't, shouldn't be that much. It should be pretty straightforward. You know, you guys are kind of on the same wavelength, which is why you guys, why you guys are a match. And it, I think it really should be your best friend. 
And if you're in a situation where you're not able to tell your best friend stuff about you, about yourself, it's probably not the right person. And why do you want to be with somebody all day, every day, have kids with somebody who you're not able to share everything with? I mean, you literally share everything with them physically. Why would you want to be in a relationship with them where you're not sharing everything emotionally also? So that's another way it's, it's, it's changed for me is... I think when most people are younger, they look at like that kind of Hollywood marriage thing and go, oh, that's what I want. And then they get jaded and then they're jaded. And I kind of went the opposite direction. I went, oh, this is a bunch of crap with a bunch of hooey. What a stupid institution, this and that, you know, and then realize that, okay, it really does work. I mean, the reason why I think why a lot of people connect with those Hollywood stories is because that's that's really what they want. I mean, who wouldn't, who doesn't find a movie where people are madly in love? Like, who's, who, how does that not appeal to somebody? Like, why would you not want to be madly in love? You know, are you going to act like a dork? Yeah. Are you going to not hang out with your friends as much? Yeah, probably. But you're going to be home with your best friend, right? So that's not so bad. And you're going to share a life with your best friend. That's not a bad thing. And you get to have kids with your best friend. And you get to make a home with your best friend. The person you you love being around. And I'm not saying like you guys are like attached to the hip, you know, like, like Siamese twins. But you like being around them. And when push comes to shove and you have something that you could do, you know, either just staying home and, and being with them or taking them with you with whatever, whatever you're doing is more appealing. And that stuff's out there. Like that's that's a relationship that's really out there. Just because you're not in it doesn't mean it's not out there just because you don't see it very much doesn't mean it's not out there i mean keep in mind a majority of there's a lot of dummies out there there's a lot of people doing stuff the wrong way there's a lot of people living their life the wrong way eating the wrong things watching the wrong things learning the the wrong things spending their time doing the wrong things it does just because um, just because a lot of people are doing it doesn't make it right what's the what's the quote that once I find myself on the side of the majority, I need to pause and reflect. I don't know who says that, but Tim Ferriss says it all the time. Think about it like that. Like the things that are really good, you probably don't want to be on majority side because I would say the majority side is usually the wrong side to be on. People get caught up and people get jaded and then you get caught up in their jadedness and and you change your perspective on things based on what you're seeing and Like if you turn on the news and they're talking about marriage and relationships and this person broke up with this person and this person cheated and and the the divorce rates are higher than the marriage rates and blah, 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 and all this stuff. And you're going to go, oh, but you're taking that and you're putting it on your life. You're putting it on your relationships. Don't do that. It's a beautiful thing when two people come together and are in love, whether it's a man and a woman, a dude and a dude, a woman and a woman, whatever. It's a beautiful thing when two people are compatible enough. I mean, think about how inten- how amazing that is, that you're compatible enough to want to be together for the rest of your life. And you're willing to make that commitment. And don't make that commitment like with a way out. That's that's pussy crap, okay? If if you need if you need a way out of the relationship, of the marriage that you're just getting into, don't get into that marriage. Probably not gonna work out. But the idea of being able to find somebody that you want to be with forever. And you know yourself and they know themselves and you guys know that you guys are good match together. That's a really beautiful thing. I mean, how can you not think that's beautiful? If you don't think it's beautiful, what caused you to be so jaded? And then just find another jaded person that's just as jaded as you and you guys can get married. My view on marriage, just to wrap this up, I don't know if I'm rambling. Am I rambling? Maybe. My view on marriage, just to, just to kind of tie this all together, is it went from jaded as in this whole fairy tale thing is BS to being in crappy relationships because I thought the fairy tale thing was BS so I might as well just put up with crap and I was in some really bad relationships so if you guys have relationship questions I have got fantastic answers for you I'm sure so hit me up on Snapchat on those Um, and then I met the right person and went oh I guess all this stuff does work I guess it it can be like that. It really can be like, I mean, fairy tale is a, is a stretch. I mean, what what's your definition of fairy tale? But I do know that on the weekends, 
I want to be with her. When I do something cool, I'd rather she was there. When we're the 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 people that I would want to be with more than anything in the world are my wife and my daughters. And I never would have thought that like 20 years ago that that would be the case. I thought, oh, okay, well, you got a wife and then I'm going to go hang out with my friends and then come home to my wife. And I don't want to. I want to, I want to be with her. And and I think I might have gone backwards on the whole view of marriage thing because I think people usually start out with that kind of fairy tale look into it and then people kind of force their ideas of the fairy tale, the story, falling in love with the story, love at first sight, high school sweethearts, college sweethearts. They're just supposed to get married. It's such a cute story. And then people get themselves into relationships they shouldn't be in or marriages they shouldn't be in. I kind of went backwards. I went from, okay, this is kind of dumb to, oh, this is awesome with the right person. But you got to make sure it's with the right person. So I think that might be a little backwards. So my view of marriage is extremely positive right now, but it's got to be with the right person. And if you're listening to this or watching this and you have that inclination that it might not be the right person, it's probably not the right person. Um, one huge test, uh, go watch The Notebook. Again, I'm sure you've already seen it. Watch The Notebook and watch it with your significant other. And if you're not thinking about your significant other while you're watching that, if you're maybe thinking about somebody else, you're not with the right person. That's a huge hint. But also make sure you're not taking your crappy relationship and putting the notebook relationship on it because I think that's what people do too. People story tell themselves into a good relationship. It's not that good, but they talk themselves into it because marriage is a struggle Marriage is a compromise. You don't always get what you want. You're not going to find the perfect man or the perfect woman. People tell you that. And people are wrong because people are idiots. We're surrounded by idiots. If you just walk through your life thinking that, okay, most of the people are probably not going to be people I should listen to, you'll be okay. But if you go around listening to everybody, you're going to be in a bad place. So I hope you guys are in good relationships. And if you're in bad relationships, get out of them. And if you have questions about your relationships, please feel free to hit me up on Twitter, on Snapchat. And I hope you guys have a fantastic Wednesday. And I will see you on Friday. And she was like, who? And he was like, nah. And we was like, what?